I'm beginning early. Hooray for me. Just get set up. <laughs> we are three minutes, three whole minutes early and I'm very happy just to sit and drink alone. So if, if you want to be later than this, that's fine. But the pub doors are open. <laughs> the Katie's Arms are open, literally and figuratively in any other which way. Well, hello. So, good. Right. How are we all doing? Chin, chin. Yes, although <laughs> in my case, if I get my phone the wrong way up, the chins are many. What a bloody week that was, wasn't it? On a scale of one to shit, how shit was your week? I know this is all about uplifting. I know I'm early. I know, I know. Cheers. Let's all have a little drink while we wait for other stragglers to catch up. We'll just drink alone for a minute. That was a shit week. I mean, it was a great week and it was a shit week. And this country, I am very, very cross about. But overall, it's a great week because here we are and we've made it. Hello, Amsterdam. Hello, hello, hello. Hello to everybody. I know, I look slightly like, I, I feel like I'm channeling, um, what's Ab Fab, what's she called, Joanna Lumley, but without the modelish good looks. Just the attitude of Joanna Lumley is my general vibe this week. <laughs> I poured a wine at six. That's like me. So wine o'clock for me is six o'clock. So if I want to pour it earlier than that, I have to look at the clock and go, mm, it's not really wine o'clock yet. And then I just pour it anyway. But I do have that kind of line in the sand just to like as a reminder that five o'clock is probably earlier than wine o'clock. But I'm still going to do it. Patsy, that's it. That's what I'm channeling is Patsy. And my whole attitude is Patsy today because frankly, could winter just piss off now? I've had it with winter. I've had it with grey. I know I've only just been back from Nashville about 30 seconds. But please, God, can we see some frigging sunshine mm. mine's been shit exactly thank you to everybody saying their week's been a bit shit uh, and we were going to be positive about it we're going to find the fun and i'm going to tell you all my disasters uh and embarrassing things which too endless to list but really the grayness now needs to stop and this endless pissing it down coldness shitty shitty shit just needs to bloody well stop I don't know why I got born in England. I have no, I've no idea about it. I just know that by the end of January, we are all done with the shitty weather. And I don't want to hear hello from sunny Miami. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right, Miami. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. Because there's a reason we all get so bloody miserable in this country is because it's shitting shit for six months of the year. And for the other six months, we have to deal with retards walking in our midst. <sighs> Let me just say, it's been a week for all sorts of reasons. Where shall, where shall we even begin? We should probably begin with the poor missing lady who's stressing us all out, Nicola, who's still missing. And now they say it's not suspicious. And she probably fell in the chuffing river. And I hate that. I hate that she isn't home. And I hate that she's missing and I hate it for everybody. And I hate that, worst of all, I hate that she might be cold somewhere. I think there's a thing about if someone was missing, I'd rather they were just found, however they were found. But the idea of being missing and being in a river and therefore being cold, that's really what's freaking us all out, I think. I hate it. Let me tell you about my experience this week with the DVLA. Shall I? Shall I? I will. So the DVLA, well, a long time ago, along with everything else that the assholes try and do to me, someone wrote to the DVLA saying I shouldn't be driving because I'm epileptic. Now, clearly, I wouldn't be driving if I was still having seizures because I don't want to kill anyone. I don't mind what happens to me. I'm not killing someone else and I'm not a selfish twat. However, someone thought it'd be fun to get my driving license pulled. That happened a long time ago. After my surgery, I got a new license back, but it was temporary. So I have to apply for a new driving license. And let me tell you, I probably applied 12 months ago. So I've been driving for about 12 months without a license. 
But allegedly, according to the bullshit rule book, that's still fine because as long as you've applied, you're allowed to. But I don't really care about the rules because I'm done with rules. The DVLA, and I'm saying this because other people will have experiences at the DVLA that don't relate to epilepsy or people trying to stop you driving. The DVLA have taken the best part, I don't even know, it might be more, of 12 months fanning around, losing the form twice, getting in touch with my surgeon in London, who I'm sure has got better things to do in terms of saving lives than write a form to say whether I'm allowed to drive again because I've said I can, but they need to check. And then writing to my GP as well to check that what my surgeon said might be true, that I should be allowed to drive because I haven't got seizures anymore and haven't done for about ever since I've been cured, what, five years. So about, I don't know, 12, 14 months later, finally, finally, some little tiny polyester trouser wearing dickhead with short trousers, a tiny, tiny, tiny penis that he's never really put anywhere and is in it because he gets a really good pension and he gets this many sick days a year, this many holiday days a year and he gets to know where he parks and he parks in the same spot every day and he gets a discount on going to the gym and he gets a discount on this and he gets free food at the council cafe and FD, FD, FD and he gets to work from home most of the time because that's how the DVLA now works because there's just such a bunch of small-minded, cretinous individuals who don't know what life is and wouldn't know risk if someone waggled their nipples in their face, they wouldn't understand risk or fun. I, I could turn up naked on the door of someone from the DVLA and they would not know what fun would be or what to do with me, other than probably to report me to someone immediately because there's a naked woman at my door. And, oh my God, that's so terrifying. That's the people that work in DVLA. That's the people that work in transport and council offices. That's the people inside the public sector very often. I've not had a drink yet. So today I receive a letter from that guy who I hope doesn't have children because if you're from the DVLA, frankly, breeding should be, I just think, restricted. If you want to live your life, if, you, if you're going to live your life so small that your pension is what you're living for, you should not be allowed to breed. And I know people will say this is eugenics and this is part of me being a far-right fascist. It isn't. It's just a statement of fact. Like, I think short people shouldn't breed, right? So you shouldn't be able to breed if you work for the DVLA or your pension is your main motivator or your biggest excitement is that you've got the same parking spot that you've had for all of your life because you really like it because it means that your freaking Fiat Panda won't get scratched. Fuck off. Anyway. Yes, HMRC are also small dicks. That's precisely, that is precisely what we are saying here. To enable me to issue your licence... Oh, I'm now allowed to have a driving licence till I'm 70. <laughs> I don't want a driving licence till I'm 70. I'm only planning to make 50. 50 is my target age. I couldn't give a shit what happens past 60. I don't plan to be around. Old age never appeals. And if old age involves being like anybody from the DVLA, I can kill me tomorrow. I didn't mean that as literally as I said it, just because there's a fat war on my head. Medical inquiries have now been completed and I can confirm the DVLA doctor has recommended you be issued with a licence till your 70th birthday. Well, the DVLA doctor can sod off because if I paid for you to go through training to be a doctor and the best you could be was a DVLA doctor, ugh, I'd rather go and see my vet. If that's what you thought signing up to be a doctor meant, which was being a doctor for the DVLA, like how small was your ambition? Like see that fingernail there? Your ambition was smaller than my finger. You are a DVLA doctor. If I was out in public, I would rather admit to being Gary Glitter. I would rather admit to being a filmer of child porn. I would rather, oh God, this will get me completely pawned on YouTube. I would rather admit to being a serial sexual predator than I would to being a DVLA doctor. I mean, how you haven't just hung yourself with your own stethoscope at this point, I hope no AI is going to check this monologue because it's not ideal. And no, I haven't been drinking. I literally feel, this is a week, I tell you, it's been a week. 
To enable me to issue your license, please fill out the enclosed form D797M and return with the current photo of yourself. Rules on the photo are shown on the form. Not only have I got to fill in a form D74777M, but I have to put a photo on it. And also there are rules about the photo and the rules about the photo are on the form. So if you read the rules about the photo, then you can put the photo on the form and then you can return the fucking form. And then someone will return it back to me because they'll say I didn't sign something properly. I can't do it. I can't. I can't. I cannot live in this world because it's so small. You see, this is what happens when people put, this is what happened with Australia being deported. This is what happened with every job I've ever had. Soon as someone tries to make my world smaller, I just, show us a pic of your deported tattoo. Well, I can get my arse out, but then people will say, then I will definitely be marked as porn on YouTube. So I filmed in the form d 797 m Get this, this is the bit I just love. Please note, I'm unable to issue your license without a new photo. Yes, that's why you've asked for a photo. If I do not receive, oh, oh, get this. Get this. Bear in mind, 14 months, nothing. 14 months, no nothing. Chased up, followed up, nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. If I don't receive the completed form, within the next 14 days, I will assume you do not wish to proceed with your application and your application will be withdrawn accordingly. May I remind you that the withdrawal of your application will mean that you no longer have the right to drive. Return this letter with the completed D797M. 14 months of waiting to be given back my driving license that I should have the right to because just because I'm epileptic once doesn't mean I'm epileptic forever and if I was going to kill someone I wouldn't be on the road anyway because I'm not a full-blown arsehole like most of the people who work in the DBLA and now I have 14 days to get a form back with the correct nah, nah, nah. because if I don't I'll never be allowed to drive again I feel like getting a car and just I could all I'm saying is I know people with large machinery. <sighs> okay, that was that. Now let me tell you the next thing. Been away, been away, been away. Come back from Derby. Thank you to everybody who's in Derby. And breathe, exactly. Do you know I have really big lungs? <laughs> we won't do this now. But if I do it, I can hold a note for a really... <laughs> <laughs> Why does my brain do this? I can hold a note for a really, 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 really long time, like longer than any of my family. <laughs> That's like statistically good, right? That's like the data. The data is that I have massive lungs. Anyway, uh, so I go to Derby, come home, and then next morning, um, lovely Mark's gone to work, and I'm in charge of getting everyone fed and out the house. Okay, open the fridge door. Just a reenactment for you there which I hate it when I go and stay somewhere else and the fridge opens that way, because then you're like, <laughs> and then you realise, oh no, no milk. So lovely Mark, no disrespect, but you know, having been on the road being a stand-up, mm -mm, working mother, just would have been nice if someone could have shopped for some milk, but okay, hold on. Mm. We're gonna get through this together. No milk, 7.15. And I think, right, before I have to wake people up, 7.20, 7.25, quick fly to the village shop, milk, back, right? So pyjamas, quite nice ones, blue, hearts, not too bad. Pull on the duvet coat over, zip up. So obvious pyjama bottoms, face like slapped ass, And those eyes, like at my age, word, I can't see out my eyes for at least the first 40 minutes of a day. And after that, um, she hasn't even started her glass yet. I know, look, that's all I've drunk, like literally that. that but that all had to come out. I saved it for you guys. <laughs> D474. So my eyes like take a good 40 minutes for me to even open. You can see this in my running videos in the morning, like the bags like this. But then what has to happen, you'll know, is like the water in my eyes, at least like 15 gallons of water have to come out my eyes and dribble down here. You'll know some of you for at least an hour, from a good sort of 6.30 through 8.30, just water. So if I like try and put on makeup or try and look in any way 
normal. Ooh, just where is it coming from? What is that water? Is it urine? Is it sweat? What is what is this coming out of my? What is coming out of my eyes anyway? Seven ten. Can't see out of eyes. Pajamas on. No underwear. Wet. Just crying because that's my forty whatever I am seven year old eyeballs. Get to village shop. First one there. Dive through the door. Obviously they know me in there because, well, because you know. I'm hard to ignore. As I walk in, pajama bottoms, which have elastic, which has always been a bit dodgy, which can be handy for romantic scenarios. You hear me? Or having a wee. Pajama bottoms to the floor. Pajama bottoms round ankle, trip through, not a word of a light, front door, village shop, face like slapped ass, can't see through eyes, walk into shelving unit and say, you've got to help me, I need milk. And the guy, love him, went, we haven't got any milk. <laughs> and he didn't even laugh at me. Pulling up my pyjama bottoms, he says, look, we've got some out the backs. So the fridges are broken, but I've got to lock the shop. So I've got to leave the shop, stand outside for him to go out back, find me some milk and come back with it. And I have to get out the shop with my pyjama bottoms halfway around my ankles, can't see, walk into the door while he's getting me milk. That... That was just the first day back. That's the start of my week. There, let me tell you. <clears throat> Message to self. Probably need new pyjama bottoms. <laughs> Except today when I went back in the store, I had hiccups. Apologised for my hiccups. I didn't want to be rude. And when I hiccup, I go... <clears throat> so I was trying to keep... <clears throat> And I was like, I've got hiccups, I'm so sorry. And then big guy who saw me with my pyjama bottoms down came around and he went, boo! And I was like, and he went, oh, last time you were in here, you didn't have any pyjama bottoms on. And there was a massive line of people, also awkward. What else happened this week? My daughter left home. So I'm one down already. So my 17, so mine go 18, 17, 14. My 17 year old left home. And she's moved out, you know, she's a farmhand. She has 200 head of cattle. She can drive a tractor. She passed her driving test. She bought her own car and she moved out of home to go and live on the farm to, to help run the herd. <sighs> so that was emotional. I'm like, please, because I want kids to leave and people will know. I'm like, um, you know, I'm scared that my children will want to stay home. So I like, I'm like, let's get them out because I really believe kids have to leave home so they can have more fun. And uh, so I'm really happy that she's doing life. But then also I was like, oh no, my child is gone. And so then I had to hoover because I emotionally hoover. So vacuum clean. So if I'm upset, I have to hoover. So she literally walked out the door and I went and got my vacuum cleaner and started vacuuming the floor. <laughs> and the other kids were like, mom, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm emotionally hoovering, leave me alone. <laughs> So that was so that was another thing that happened this week. And I think I think that's the end of it for now. That's my emotional drama. Right. Hello. Can I get a hello? Yes. Hello. You're here to watch for the first time. OK, so please know, I think I'm this this. I'm not normally this uh, whatever this is to uh, please know that it's not about me. Um, it's about uh, the family on here and hello from the Isle of Man. And so if you ever feel like pissed off or you feel like you're on your own, the point of the Katie's Arms is that you can look at the doop -doop 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 stream thingy, feed thingy, whatever the shitting thing is here. And you can see how many of us we are. And the thing is, hello, Honolulu. Hello. What do, what do you say in Honolulu? What's the greeting in Honolulu? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, someone will help me hide from Florida. The idea is you see all these people here. And, um, oh, bless you, Comcast at Derby. That was so fun. It was so fun to do stand-up in front of a full audience. One of our troopers vomited all over the floor just before we started. <laughs> it was a proper, proper old-school stand-up. Another guy, I did, I, uh, so you'll know, if you know me, I don't leave till the last man. And uh, after I do my sets, I stand out and for two hours just hug everybody. So I did an hour set and then I just stand and we all hug and people can come up and chat and tell me their things. And so one sweet guy came up and he had like a thousand layers on. And I was like, oh, oh, you not, are you a bit hot, a bit hot? And he was like, well, I was one of the guys that got vomited on. 
<laughs> so I had to add some layers. <laughs> and that to me is like the joy of our side is that's who we are. Like, oh, someone puked on me. Well, never mind. I'll put on a couple of extra coats and I'll still go up and get a hug from Katie. <laughs> So, um, yes, I have a 17 year old. I'll tell her she has to leave. I do. Oh, I was amazing. Well, thanks. Uh, don't mind me. I, um, I think kids do need to leave. I, I get that it's very expensive and life's very hard and be 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 but I do think we have to help kids find the fun. And actually I've so changed because like, I used to be about like, oh, striking teachers. Terrible. That's terrible. Terrible. And I totally get like, if you need to go to work, you kind of need your kids to go to school. But like now, when, so my youngest, his teachers were on strike and I was like, brilliant, what should we do that's fun? Because it's it's almost like we gain a day of doing something that's better than school. I don't think we actually did much, but the idea of being in school, I know that there's more life and more learning outside of school than you'll ever find in some sort of British curriculum. That's my view. I've mellowed. I know, I know. I need to tell you about leather skirts and I need to tell you about speak. Oh, lovely Mark has told me something I have to tell you. <laughs> okay, here I go. I'm going to channel it. Lovely Mark. Can I have a little drink a minute? Can you just talk about yourself? My son buggered off for 80 raw Marines. Oh, can you imagine if my, if I had a raw Marine in the family, how exciting would that be? God love Royal Marines, have always loved them very much in every way, uh, physically, and, and I've loved many Marines. I feel like I've boosted the morale <laughs> of the Royal Marines. <laughs> many of them. I've sent off to active duty, <laughs> carrying a lighter load than they may have done before. <laughs> okay, stop now. I haven't even had a drink. Um, okay, here's what lovely Mark has told, can I just tell you that I have the heater on in this room? I'm slightly starting to sweat from the nose <laughs> and you'll see the size of my nose. we be dehydrated in about two minutes. Ooh, I have sweat patches. What did lovely Mark tell me to tell you? I've got to get this correct. Here I go. Speak easies. You may or may not know, and it's a secret. So shh, don't let the bastards know. Uh, whenever you're feeling fearful, please know that there is a network of speakeasies springing up across this fine country of ours. And just as in the time of prohibition, when drinking wasn't allowed, now speaking isn't, all over the country there are speakeasies, 200 people, 100 people, 50 people gathering. And you'll know that I committed myself as part of action, not words, to helping build the speakeasies. So if you have uh, been in touch with lovely Mark and are setting up speakeasies, thank you. Mark should have got back to everybody today, apart from Malvern. So if you are Malvern speakeasy, please do email landlord at katiesarms.com. Uh, but Mark is aware, Malvern, we're on to you. And this network of speakeasies is so exciting, but we have to keep it kind of quiet because it, we don't want anyone to bugger it up. Um, so speakeasies are happening and we're getting back to you. And then the dates that we still have some tickets for in real world theatres uh, are Blackpool on the 13th of May. Although that is building brilliantly. They're really excited in Blackpool. Uh, VIP tickets have gone, but other tickets are there. And it is not about me. It is all about being in that building. Like tickets to Blackpool are about being on the pier, being in that building, being in the bar opposite. That's just going to be... 30th of May is going to be an uplift. Like, I want to get it filmed as well so that we can have that for other people who can't get there, whatever. And we're trying to make sure we can get some free tickets as well because people in America and other places want to... Um, Amer Americans and other countries want to buy tickets for you guys to let you know that they support you as well. So we're trying to organise that too. Uh, Blackpool 30th of May, Stafford. 31st of May and Perfleet 6th of May. So I got that in the wrong order, didn't I? Perfleet 6th, Blackpool 13th, Stafford 31st. Um, so do, you're coming to Blackpool. I can't even, if you want to go to a speakeasy, um, I think we need some kind of speakeasy email list. And clearly we're trying to stop the lunatics being knob ends and trying to get amongst it. But if you live in a particular place, um, 
you know, do email landlord at katiesarms.com with where you live. Uh, not like specifically your home address. <laughs> we'll get lovely Mark like on your door. Um, but just uh, we're trying our best to map secret speakeasy with our audience. You can imagine Stamford is going to be epic. Stafford is going to be epic. Uh, and I'll be doing tours of those areas in uh, February, March, just to shake the hands of the theatre owners who have stood by us. Uh, Perfectly in Essex, yes, yes, where darts happens, I think, yes, good, there, right, ah, good, let me um, now answer things, I want to come, if you can find a theatre where the theatre owner or manager says, sure, we'd consider having Katie, bloody get their email and get it to me, I will come, I will come anywhere, (laughs) <laughs> no, I'll come anywhere we can find a venue that will hold. And all they have to hold, there's nothing real they have to hold against. They just have to hold against an initial mm, petition. Oops, Joey Deacon. And they have to, like a couple of weaselly burrs that go, oh, we're gonna, uh, you don't know what she said in the past. Uh. They just have to hold the line against that, which is really just a couple of people who probably need a good hand job or some toys. I mean, I'm sorry to say that about the Tory councillor that put the petition up against me in wherever it was, but uh, that's actually true. That's how I feel, rather. That's true. <laughs> um, so excited for Blackpool. I know, you're only 24. This is this is what's happening. So in Derby, the other day, a 15-year-old, lovely girl, might be on here. Hello, if you are. I should be Prime Minister, I know. Can you imagine how excited? Can you even imagine the outfits walking into number 10? Mm. Pajama bottoms. 6.30, no milk. Super high heels, just so I look like a power person. <laughs> it would be like comedy every day. Be like, today I've come dressed as a vegan. <laughs> Do you like my sandals? <laughs> today I've come as a horse. Or maybe Jacinda Ardern. Or maybe myself. <laughs> uh, am I going to the Freedom March in London on the 16th? Ooh, I don't know. No. But I am, I don't think so. I think I'm somewhere. But I'm definitely, definitely going to Oxford on, I think it's the 18th of March. And uh, I don't have a position or I don't speak there. Um, but mostly because if I'm speaking, like other people go, well, I can't speak if Kate is speaking because it will damage my reputation. <laughs> Which is the wankiest thing ever. Like, are you on our side or not? Have you got balls? No. You, what? Sorry, you want to look after your Twitter follower numbers so you can't be seen in the same place as me. That's how committed you are to this fight. <laughs> yeah, don't mind if you don't watch my six. <laughs> Is that all right? <laughs> Can I choose someone else that isn't you? Because I'd rather have someone that could grow a pair and be man the fuck up. Sorry, language. Mumsy. Mm, still on the wall. Um, Katie for president. Yeah. <sighs> thank you thanks everybody thanks yeah, this has been very this has been really much better than going to the hairdressers because I really don't like telling you know hairdressers my things because it's sort of I'm sort of filling people up I always believe right there's um n- no dis- I love love hairdressers love but I don't feel the need to if there's a hairdresser's shop with lots of people I don't really want to fill them up with my things um, maybe this is the lesson, maybe this is the serious moment of this, Katie's arm. So when I was being uh, left by my husband and I was being left with two children under the age of one and a half, I know, I got straight back on the bike, darlings, straight back on the horse. So two two children under the age of 18 months, well, 19, hmm, who's counting? Um, I was left on my own and... Uh, my husband buggered off with the secretary and moved into where I used to live in America. <laughs> and she packed my stuff to send it back to me. Anyway, um, the point is that uh, people used to come up, uh, friends used to say, if I met them, they would go, oh, how are you? Oh, are you do- oh. <laughs> I can't even do the face now because it makes me, makes me laugh. But they would go, um... Oh, are you, are you okay? How is it? Oh, is it awful? And I would look at them and I would think, I know what you are. And those are the people, and you will know these, um, 
you will know these people in your life. When something goes bad for you, they're all about it, right? Oh, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? Are you okay? <laughs> There's even a song sheet, right? Are you okay? <laughs> and what they really mean is, could you fill me up with all the gory details about how shit it is? Because I'm going to tell everybody else. And I'm going to say, oh, poor Katie. Because, you know, he left. And yeah, she's really, really hot. Yeah, the secretary. Yeah, she's got great tits. I know. I know. Two children under two. Who's going to be interested in her now? I know. And that's what they're really doing. Right? They're, 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 filling up their buckets with your misery so they can go and splash it about and attract some attention for themselves. Are you okay? So my advice to you, if you hear that particular lyric, are you okay? Is that you say, yeah, I'm really, really good. Why do you ask? Or yeah, I'm really, really good. Why did you, did you need something? Yes, I'm really, really good. And uh, actually, all I need from my friends is some fun. So just boosh, block it and, you know, punch them. Not not physically punch them. I'm not I'm not uh, inciting violence, but like as if you were like as if someone was attacking me and I was breaking their nose upwards through their sockets. So you want to say, yeah, I'm really good. Thank you. Why? Why do you need something? And look into the middle distance which is you really breaking their nose up. can you tell i may have done that before and um that's what you've got to do to protect yourself from people who call themselves friends not your real friends not these friends is that ribena are you kidding me look i've hardly drunk anything this is one glass for this whole rant look i have all this i have all this to go i have so much work to do okay um, what's my take on the state of the nhs fuck that's a big one at the uh, 2029 but is it okay to open a second bottle yes never ask permission never listen to people who try and make rules about your health because one day a glass of wine is good for you the next day it's not one day if you drink this it's good for you one day it's not salt is good for you now it's not aspirin is now it's not balls to anyone telling five a day fuck off someone just sat and went i'm plucking out my ass the figure of five a day so that people will drink more smoothies from Joe the Juice and be bankrupt. You don't need to have five a day. Bollocks to fruit if you don't like fruit. Bollocks to veg if you don't like veg. It's, an, it's just a manipulated idea, manipulated notion. You think some kind of Stone Age man was walking around going, oh, I need my five bananas here on the plains of Salisbury. No, fuck off. Where were we? Can't remember. So anyway, oh, the NHS. Yeah, completely buggered. Completely buggered. Completely. Needs to be re redone by somebody super efficient like moi. Uh, sorted out into units, units of speciality. If you've got this problem, you're sent to this place. This problem sent to this place. And frankly, the only way you're surviving is if you get amongst major cities. The only reason I'm here is because lovely Mark grabbed me out of the place they were going to leave me in to just pop off. And took me to London and threw me through the front door of the neurology unit in London. Because in Exeter they weren't willing to get an ambulance to get me to London. And I would have just stayed there till I popped off. Probably 24 hours later. So, yeah. We don't want to end on that. But I would say advocacy is everything. Do not be entering the NHS without someone next to you. Like me, prepared to literally shove someone's nose through their eye socket in your defence. Good. Good. OK, um, Katie leather skirt. Yeah, we're going to have to do that next time. I have purchased some leather skirts and my plaits in the sale, in the sale. Don't think I've gone all flash. I didn't like, well, I could kill the cows because we're farming, but um, I purchased leather skirts. So let's agree this. We will do a Katie's arms and we will try on the leather skirts and we will get the family feedback on whether it's a me or whether it's a my view is it might be and my other view is sweaty crotch and I'm concerned that in a moment of uh, you know stress or untoward activity or over excitement if I start to sweat in the way that women know that we can't actually physically sweat from the groin and I've had sweat beads other people will pretend they don't know this but I know this I've had sweat beads trickle down 
the inside of my thigh and down the back of my knee before whilst wearing a dress. So what I'm saying is we need to discuss the leather skirt thing because I feel like it's a grown up thing to do. Like as if I was presenting the one show and equally, I think sweaty crotch, a bit too grown up for me. <laughs> Sorry, I thought someone was just saying, um, I thought someone was just saying, what is going on here? Well, yeah. Okay, so thank you for listening to me. Uh, in summary, screw the DVLA and everybody that works there, especially if you're a DVLA doctor, do not come near me. Do not follow me. Don't, please, never. I don't want to even know that you're in my life. Uh, always get milk or have a husband that buys milk and doesn't make you go to the shop without your pyjama bottoms on, you know. Always get your children to leave home, even if you have to emotionally hoover. Uh, do come to Blackpool or Stafford or perfectly. I think we're nearly sold out of Stafford. And I love you all very much. Yes, good. Oh, I love your book. I read it on my flight. So funny. I'm so happy. What's with Sam Smith? Sam Smith, just being a complete low, low budget. I like to put this in people's bottoms. And there's just no need to be low budget about that. If you're going to do that, at least be fabulous or be Freddie Mercury. And don't be morbidly obese and put nipple tassels on. No one wants to see nipple tassels on a Greg sausage roll. Mm? Good. Right. Goodbye. <laughs> and thank you for listening to me.